put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Drag me to hell. Unrated edition, I believe. Movie review. Christine Brown approves loans in a bank, and she has a pretty nice life. She might get a promotion. Her boyfriend, I'm pretty sure they're just dating. Uh, well, he's the Mac guy, and that's kind of cool. And yeah, it, things seem to be going well. But then one day, she has to process the the case of a gypsy woman who wants a third extension or a mortgage, whatever, something, and because she is fighting hard for the promotion, Christine decides not to give her, and for some reason the movie really wants us to think that that was a horrible thing to do, even though I understand that it's actually really rare that it would be done, and it is, you know, it's it's a bank, it's other people's money that she'd be, so it's, yeah, I, I don't know, I guess it's just the simple-minded, lowest common denominator idea of what a bank is. <gasps> they take your money! I guess we should just be really grateful that Christine isn't a hook-nosed Jew. Anyway, the gypsy lady takes it surprisingly well. She curses Christine, giving her three days to be like teased by this evil spirit or something, and at the end of that, yeah, the, the title, and yeah, that's, that's the plot, basically, and Christine now has to find out the terms and conditions of this particular curse. I, I do really appreciate that she got three days. Although the movie would have been shorter if it was just like one day or just until the, yeah, un until night broke, and that would really have been nice, but it does give them some time to, uh, yeah, do freaky stuff with spirits, so, and, uh, yeah, gives Christine time to try to deal with the spirit as the audience realizes that they could be watching The Ring instead, which has a similar, you know, basic concept, uh, or even thinner, at least that has Joe Mantegna, and he's just awesome. Anyway, it has been said that this is basically as close as we'll get to Evil Dead 4, which I just think is really, really depressing. Raimi's long-awaited return to horror has been really positively received by many and really negatively received by everyone else. I think you've already 
discovered which camp I am in. And it would appear that some, including professional critics, are just so happy to see him doing horror again that they'll take anything. He brings his bag of tricks, but unfortunately this time it's cheap tricks. Pretty much every quote-unquote scare in the movie is a jump scare. I'd actually recommend instead of watching the movie, just watch the video by Fails. He shows every jump scare, counting them down. I'm not going to give away how high it gets, but it's really ridiculously high. And yeah, that movie, that, that video is like 17, 18 minutes long, and this movie is 94. Yeah, I, that, that's, it'll save you a lot of time, excuse me, and you won't really be missing much. Not only are they jump scares, but they are also really obvious jump scares, like the sound will get extremely low just to let you know, or it'll be, they even once or twice do these really, really cheap things like yeah basically the trailer gives weight there's actually a dream sequence how is that still in horror movies how does how does that ever happen in anything other than like a parody of a horror movie and then there's at least one bit where it's like they really should have been able to tell that that was there before it is revealed to the audience. Yeah, not many, thankfully, but they are still there. Now the I will say that the the very ending is admittedly quite grim. The producers realized this and found it within their hearts to warn people ahead of time. It is so telegraphed that it is not even funny. The effects are nice, I will give them that. It's... There's a... There, there is a bit of CGI and it tends to be fairly well integrated. It doesn't feel... A lot of CGI has that kind of fake, plasticky quality to it, and that isn't really the case here. I'm not sure there was really any CGI that didn't. And you, you tend to not be able to tell where real life ends and CGI begins. Except for, you know, obviously, well, they couldn't really have done that in real life. That kind of thing. Now the... The basic... Sort of... This follows a lot of the, the Raimi that we're kind of used to. We have these characters that we don't really like or care that much about. And... Yeah, we're supposed to laugh or gasp, respectively, as, as as disgusting stuff happens to them. There's a lot of, like, bodily function, yeah, bo bo bodily juices, I suppose, in this movie. Quite, quite a lot. Anyway, yeah, disgusting stuff as they get physically injured, although Christine shrugs off quite a lot of that, impressively much of that, or as these characters are embarrassed. And yeah, I didn't find any of it really funny. There's, there's like one bit where I laughed hysterically, and I'm almost certain that it wasn't supposed to be a joke. And yeah, I realized that Raimi's brand of horror is 
it mixes horror and comedy. I will say it's not as mean spirited as Spider Man 1. I was pretty. That surprised me, and, and I did not hate every single character in this. It's actually kind of. I, I hate that movie. With this, it's just all kind of meh. It, it's not really going to leave an impression on you. It, like, like I said, it's, it's jump scares. That, they don't really build mood that much. Or if they do, they, they only spend just a few seconds on it. And then something, yeah, jumps out at you. And by the way, the scares... I can understand how this maybe played well in the theater, where there was, you know, <laughs> yeah, where basically the scares are th they crank the volume and then just have these noises or just loud, loud sound, and that's supposed to be scary. And it's, it's kind of, it's overpowering maybe, but it's not really scary. It's like you can't really be scared of what you're looking at. It's just that the sound, it was actually, it was kind of distracting. It was like it had the soundtrack of a horror movie, but it, it, it was like they, they accidentally put the soundtrack of a horror movie over this attempt at comedy. Now the... about the characters. Basically, our two leads are really dull. And yeah, pretty much every character is just... you're not gonna remember them. They actually even put in... like there's this this one guy that Christine is competing with for the promotion, and he's just kind of a weasel, and it's basically, it's the Ted Raimi role. It's, it's the role Ted Raimi plays every time he appears in something by, by Sam. That's, that's, it's, it's Joxer, or the, the yeah, the guy from the Spider-Man movies. Yeah, just, and, yeah, it's, it, was, it was actually kind of distracting. I kept imagining that it was actually him, that, that he, maybe that's the real, where the, where the supernatural comes into it. Maybe that guy was actually possessed by Ted Raimi. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, the characters are just not memorable, not, not interesting at all. It's really clear that Raimi really just wants to chuck bodily fluids at these people or throw them into a wall or something. And that's, that's all well and good. This, that's what he wants to do. But he, then he tries to have his cake needed too by actually trying to capitalize on the sympathy that is supposed to be there for these characters. And it just falls completely flat on its face. Now, the, the tone is tongue-in-cheek, as expected. There's, there's this early bit where basically the, the thing that is supposed to kind of creep us out and such is this fly, and it, it flies right past the camera a couple of times, and each time we hear it buzzing, and the camera is, I think it's pretty much completely static. And after a little while, it actually lands on the camera lens, sort of drawing attention to, hey, it's, it's flying around like this for the benefit of the camera, for the benefit of the audience. So yeah, now it's just gonna land on. Clearly, clearly the camera actually exists in the world that this is taking place, so let's just have the fly land on its lens. Yeah, I didn't think it was particularly clever either, but 
There you go. That's an example that gives you an idea. Now the... I like Justin Long. I, I really do. I love him in Galaxy Quest. I don't know why he was so boring here. Actually, I guess it's, it's the writing. It's the clearly doesn't give a crap about these characters' writing. And it's, it's really... It, they actually do try to remind you, no, 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 he's not actually the Mac guy in this, because when we first meet him, he's having trouble fixing his printer, so clearly he can't be the Mac guy. Although Christine has a Mac, and he has a smartphone, and the movie wants you to go buy one. I think that's pretty much everything I have. Just, I don't know, I didn't hate it, I guess, but it's just an hour and a half of nothing. It, it, it doesn't really work, is basically the conclusion. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.